Welcome to Real Estate Economics Weekly Webinar Series. Real Estate Economics is a leading provider of residential market consulting services and online research tools. Every week we present a webinar of interest to the home building industry, uh, land developers, financial institutions, mortgage brokers, real estate economists nationwide. This week we'll be addressing Miami, Florida. We've just completed a large series on the Southern California market area. Uh, if you're interested in seeing any of our past webinars, you can go to www.youtube.com backslash real estate economics. If you click a link at the top uh, called All, you will see our previous webinars and you can view those at your own uh, pace and uh, stop and start and see those in streaming high def. At any time, you can see the upcoming webinar schedule on our website, www.realestateeconomics.com. Uh, next week, we'll be presenting Kern County, followed by Salt Lake City, Utah, on November 17th. It's the Bay Area of California. Uh, the next week is off for Thanksgiving. Then December 1st, Seattle. Uh, don't miss our December 8th. That's a rollout of our new Real Estate Economics website. And lastly, before the holidays on December 15th, the National 2010 uh, Recap and Housing Market Overview. Uh, as I mentioned this week, Miami-Dade. We like to look at current market transactions as we move around the country in our webinar series and analyze uh, what sort of market share can be attributed to resale homes. Those are shown in blue in the table and blue on the map. Now that's a category that includes short sales. Green dots and the re green in the table are new builder to owner subdivision sales shown on the map in um, burnt orange but in red on the table are foreclosures that's um, owner back to lender transactions foreclosures and repossessions and last shown in yellow on the map and in burgundy in the table are foreclosure sales that's bank out to new third party owners as you can see in this particular market area, uh, foreclosures are pretty prevalent. This is for the single month of September 2010. Uh, resale prices are now at 282, new builder prices 371, and foreclosure sales at this uh, very bargain basement number of 138,808. Uh, very interesting things are taking place in this market. Uh, this particular table shows the differential between uh, detached sales of all types, all categories, and condo sales. We've got a tremendous recent surge in condo volume. If you think about the um, owner profile in this particular market, there are many vacation homes, many second owners, many owners who reside much of the year outside this area. So when homes are foreclosed, they go back to lenders. Um, as a result, short sales have not taken the same market share improvements here in this market that they have in many markets across the country. This has tended to drive prices down, particularly on the condo side. You can see how the uh, value ratios and price, average prices have played out over the last three years in this area mm -hmm. uh, on a value ratio side down from just under 199 uh, per square foot in September of 2008 down to a current figure of about 127 per foot. Some very interesting things are taking place here in terms of market share by price range. This particular table shows a distribution of all sales by percentages and price range. Uh, the current period is in the columns, two columns on the left, uh, one year ago and two years ago are also shown. I'm going to call attention to two things here. At the very top in the light blue, we've had a tremendous surge in sales in the very lowest prices that's under 100,000 for this particular market. Uh, this has a whole bunch of repercussions. If you're acquiring a unit in this market at this low price range, uh, which is typical for buyers and rental investors, rental rates for a home of this price are very, very low. We've seen in many markets nationally that consumer sales have held up clothing sales, gadgets, trinkets, iPods, uh, different things have sold surprisingly well, often surprising. Uh, the economists and pundits. Uh, one of the things that contributes to this is people are either not paying their mortgage, not paying their rent, whatever, 
uh, moving down to lower rental rate accommodations, that sort of thing, which is freeing up some cash flow that's translating to some extent into consumer sales. On the other end of this market, I've highlighted the 500,000 and plus range. Uh, we're starting to see the initial signs of something we see in high value markets, resort markets, markets with international appeal and some luxury elements. I'm talking to Aspen, um, parts of San Francisco, Newport Beach, other high value areas across the nation where we're seeing increased sales volume in the upper upper price ranges. We've started to see that numerically here, although not on a percentage share quite yet. This is a vibrant international market. Many people travel here uh, for business uh, repeatedly during the course of the year, vacation here, and now prices have gotten very, very affordable, uh, particularly in non-dollar denominated uh, businesses and industries, uh, so that home prices here look very affordable to international buyers, and that's starting to spur a little bit of activity. Uh, one of the things you can see that's really favored the international buyers here is the action in the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar is obviously come way down. This is in the news every day. I'm showing in this particular table U.S. dollar over Canadian dollar since our Canadian friends like to travel a lot and also like warmer international climates for vacation and second home ownership. As you can see, back in April of 2009, it took about 1.27 uh, Canadian dollars to buy one U.S. dollar. That figure closed yesterday on Tuesday at 1.02366. This makes U.S. real estate much, much, much more affordable than it has been in the last several years. There's also some uh, other consequences of this. Um, by comparison, Canadian workers are now being paid much higher and U.S. workers are being paid much lower. This will really affect um, a U.S. citizen worker purchasing power around the world, but in terms of our real estate, it's going to let international buyers uh, come into our markets and acquire um, homes at prices they will consider very, very affordable. We'd like to look at the price action here in Miami-Dade. As you can see, this has been a very affordable market area right up into the early 2000s. Um, many markets regionally across the nation have uh, degraded back to price levels last seen in 2000, 2001, 2002. Uh, despite the pain that we've felt here in Miami-Dade that has not taken place, we've got prices uh, settling in uh, just a little bit above $200,000 here, which is about 203, 202, 203 price levels. We don't see that coming all the way back to 2000, 2001, when a lot of price appreciation began to take place here. Uh, certainly, Prices got overextended in 2005, 6, and 7, but we're going to come back to a plateau that's considerably higher than it was uh, 15 years ago or 12 years ago, unlike many other market areas. How can we tell what the valuation looks like in this particular market? You can take household incomes for any market across this country, look at uh, mortgage rates, which tend to be quite similar um, nationally, and see what percentage of the household income has to go into supporting the monthly mortgage costs and then do a comparison and that's what we've got in this table. In the United States, um, mortgage uh, costs, home ownership costs if you will, are 38 percent lower now than they were in 2006. That's pretty much based on steady incomes but much, much, much lower interest rates. As interest rates have has come down, it takes much less much smaller piece of the household income to afford uh, homes in all these given market areas. Um, by comparison, you can see the high damage markets, Las Vegas, Sacramento, many portions of Southern California, Miami included, and also the low damage markets uh, where for one reason or another, some of these markets uh, to a large extent avoided the same pain. Uh, Austin, Texas, Salt Lake City, Denver to some extent uh, just haven't been in the same situation as the extremely damaged markets, uh, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Sacramento. Here's 30-year fixed rates, national averages. You can see the big event here was in 2008 to 2009 when rates went from 6 to 5 as the Federal Reserve began to intervene in the mortgage market. Um, 
mortgage rates remain low, and that has really helped produce a condition of severe undervaluation in most markets. When interest rates come down uh, to uh, these low levels, it takes much less income to support a household uh, or to support a home ownership, home purchase in these areas. Um, people are not recognizing that. They're really unable to move on that because of job insecurity, poor confidence, the economic conditions. But as or once the economy begins to heal, uh, people will be able to act on that. One thing supporting, ultimately supporting prices here in this market will be very, very, very low permit levels. You can see this market averaged oh, roughly 8 to 15, 14 or 15,000 permits every year going back to 1990. For the period from 2008 all the way through 2014, we've got permits under 5,000 every year, barely over 1,000 this year. Um, that will help sop up some of the excess supply. Now one of the things that took place in the subprime is not only did we not pay that much attention to who was buying, but not that much uh, attention was paid to the collateral, the homes in many cases. I think what we're going to find at the end of this distressed housing cycle is some certain percentage of the properties are going to be um, extremely bad. You know, the real dregs, if you will, the bottom of the barrel with very low recovery values. The easy to sell good stuff is being scooped up by investors now and by prospective owner occupants. But I believe there's a certain percentage at the bottom that will have very low recovery values um, and may ultimately be sold for pennies on the dollar. Um, this uh, low supply introductions into these markets uh, coupled with you know, very low recoveries on some properties are going to help us um, realign supply and demand over time. Everyone knows the um, demographics of this particular market area. We've got tremendous demand uh, amongst retirees, second homeowners, vacation homeowners. Some of that has been mitigated in this recession. Once we lost mortgage re uh, deductibility for second homes, uh, that pulled one leg out from underneath the stool, then recession and the uh, ongoing uh, high levels of unemployment certainly haven't helped. Um, but what we've seen in this recession is higher jobless rates amongst um, senior people, oh, uh, seasoned citizens, if you will, people in private industry, um, that sort of thing. And this is going to lead them to consider their retirement living options. We think um, many parts of Florida, many parts of the South, uh, states with low cost of living and good uh, fiscal conditions are going to attract more buyers than places like California where the budgets are in turmoil. So what's the situation here on the ground? We've got housing construction at all-time low, very little construction, and very um, fewer builders active in fewer communities doing smaller phases. Housing affordability is at an all-time high. We know the market's tremendously overcorrected. We know that uh, the mortgage costs are very, very low uh, as a function of low interest rates. Housing's, housing is incredible, uh, incredibly affordable to international buyers, and we're going to see more activity from the international buyers in the years ahead. Mobile and mature buyers are already significant in this market, but they'll be increasingly significant. Mobile buyers, um, during cases of recession, we tend to see people move around quite a bit and accept whatever employment uh, opportunities come their way. That's been very slow to roll out in this recession, but we think that's picking up speed. Um, everyone's talking about robo-signers and the documentation problems. Um, it's likely that these problems will have the unintended consequence of raising prices short term simply because fewer foreclosures will be in the mix of sales. That'll mean more conventional properties will be in there and that will raise the price. And we don't like distressed inventory for many owner occupants. A lot of people are going to prefer new homes. And we've talked in a couple of our other series about capital adequacy, loan putbacks. Uh, we think this is far from played out. At Real Estate Economics, we offer a National um, Opportunity Risk Report, Nationwide Consulting Services. Uh, some of the things we do, asset valuation, do as-is value, partially completed values, finished lots, land. Uh, we um, consider trends appreciation uh, out four or five years, depreciation, if you will. And if you're coming to market out in 2012 or 2013, we'll do market entry pricing, 
uh, land value optimization workout build out. I'm John Mobile. If you have any questions today, call me at this contact information um, or look on our website, www.realestateeconomics.com. Thank you for joining us today.